Hello, everybody. Uh, I have a few plans for day, today. I meant to get to them on the weekend, but uh, things are just crazy busy. So I'm going to do them now. Hopefully I'll get them uploaded tonight and then put them out tomorrow. So you should see these tomorrow. So last batch of videos, I was supposed to do... Uh, a 101 and I did I did one but uh, I watched it it ended up being like 28 minutes long and uh, it was just so much useless crap in there just me babbling on and I got passionate about a few things maybe came across as an ass a little bit more than I usually do so I decided no you know what, I'm gonna redo it and do it better so there's a few things I want to go over in this I don't even know if you guys even do the one on one videos. I think I've got a few views on the two I've done so far. Is it two? I don't know. The tuning video, the tuning, uh, so on, so on. I think actually maybe I got four of them. But uh, there's four topics strings, intonation, finding tabs, and tuning. Those are the four we're going to cover. So we'll start off with tuning. There's a few things that I wanted, I, after I watched my tuning video I did, that was another masterpiece, 26 minutes of me babbling on. Uh, there's a few things I missed. In 26 minutes, I missed. But just to go through them, just two quick things. First, how you're supposed to put the strings on. So they always wind to the inside of the peg and come around. Right, it just helps with your string tension, keeping them in, in line where they are, not pulling out. And it's you do it the same way every time, and that way, when you do tune, you uh, it's, it gets a habit, you know which way to go to go high and go low. And that way, if you have to tune on the spot, you know what you're doing without having to figure it out again. Right, second thing is you always want to tune up. I mean tune up, you tune high. Low to high and never low, and never high to low. Because if you go low to high, the way the gears are, it keeps the tension on the strings. And that's what you want. If you go the other way, if you go high to low, you're taking the tension, the gears in the back, you're taking the tension off the strings, which can cause it to slip and while you're playing. So you always want to go low to high. So those are the two things I missed on that. Uh, now I'm going to tune. Actually I put it back in. That's how damn good I am. Uh, so what else did I say? Finding tabs. Let's do that one now. There's a lot of talk about transposing and and uh, getting stuff into the right key for the Merlin to play because a lot of times you'll be looking for something and it's got a C chord or an F chord. Well, those are the two main ones that you just don't have on a Merlin. So you want to transpose them. Just put them in a key that does work. So the site I use mostly. I don't know how this is going to work on here. Can you see that? It is Harmony Central. No, it's not Harmony Central, it's Guitar Reviews. Sorry. Ultimate-Guitar.com That's that's the site I use. I think it says on here. I guess, I don't even know. They've got to have over a million, million cat tabs on here. But you can see, I started it. We're looking at Let It Be by The Beatles. I don't know if you can see that. The main reason I'm showing you this screen before we get to the screen is show you the star system they got so when you're looking for uh, a tab that first one says chord pro why won't this focus you don't want chord pro you want just chords so once you find the one just chords you don't want tab either because the tabs kind of useless on guitar unless you're trying to figure out a tab then that's another lesson but for this one you want the chords so you find the one with the highest star rating usually 
Now, the high star rating can sometimes be uh, more pain than it's worth just because there's some songs that there's so many chords in there, like variations, like you get a D, but it's not just a D, it's a D7, D sustained, D sustained 4, D minor, all in the same line, and they show, you don't need all that. Because, well, you can't do it in a Merlin, and you don't need it. So sometimes finding the simplified version is is almost better. And so we got Let It Be by the Beatles. I did the song earlier. And you have to excuse the ad on the side. But you can see, I'm hoping you can see, that it's in the key of C. Now, key of C is no good to us. So what we want to do, as you see over that lovely ad they put in, you see there's a transpose button. And uh, you get transpose up and down. I should actually turn off all my lights so you'll be able to see better without the glare. But you get transpose up and down. So what you want to do is just hit those arrow keys up and down. So we're in C, so we want to take it up two buttons from C to C sharp to D. And that changes the key for you. And now it's in D. Now most times it's a good rule of thumb that you want to put every song you're doing in the key of D. Now there are some exceptions to that and usually that comes in when there's a minor chord. If there's like an A minor or an E minor you can always play just a normal A or normal E and that will usually work. But if you can, you want to keep that minor sounding like a real minor. And the only real minor, besides the high neck E minor, going up higher in a fret, is a B minor. So if you get an A minor, and then you want to turn, turn up two steps again, or one full step, because that's a half step each time. So, so you go from B, or is it one, step, one half step? It doesn't matter. You want to turn it up to, to from A, and you got B flat, then you got so you go up two to a B minor. So if you got minor, then you want to take it up to to a B minor or take it down to a B minor, whichever the case may be, and see if that works. Because if that B minor works, and you look at all the other chords and the other all the other chords are doable in a Merlin, then that's probably the best key to play in. But that being said, still not every song you're gonna be able to do. I had a request today from somebody, and I went and looked at the song. And not kidding, it was probably every chord, major chord, was in that song. Every single one. So no matter what you did, you're still going to be missing chords. There's no way around it. And as it wasn't only that, the sevens, minors, sustains. It was crazy, that song. La Vie, La Rose, I think it was called. But it's, that was, that was something else for the chords in that song. So what else did I talk about? Strings and intonation. So we'll do strings first. The whole point of the first 101 was just because someone asked me, I had posted a long time ago about changing the gauge on the mahogany model to see if I could get it into a different key and uh, sounding better. Or not sounding better, but so I could have two different keys, but not the big slack that you usually get when you try to loosen off and tighten up. So I tried it. And I didn't like it. I went to a thicker string. So the Merlin is what? A 24 for the low string, a 16 for the middle, and two 12s for the high strings. That's a gauge. So I came up and did a 26. I finally got a tripod too. I used to use for my video videos before was a paper towel stand, a guitar capo, and I used a guitar capo capo to attach my phone to the paper towel stand. That was my rig before. So I'm so happy I got a tripod, I can move. Anyways, so the I've switched it to a 26, a 14, and no, a 26, an 18, and two 14. So I went up two gauges. And I tuned it down, so what we were in D, what did I do, can't remember, so 
the normal Merlin's in a D, and I tuned it down with the higher gauge strings, or the lower gauge strings, I should say, to a C. Now, this is no longer in C. I brought it back up to a D. It was just way too much slack. It didn't work. Well, it did work, but it was just too much slack. You almost have to go to an even thicker string, which for the nut, or the, I mean the saddle, they're fine. They fit in there no problem. I didn't have to carve anything out and widen up the slots. But the zero fret, the nut on the end, actually does have a groove in there as well. And the 26, uh, so many numbers, the 26 I think, the low string, whatever I said it was earlier, was almost too wide to go in that slot. So that um, if I go any wider, or any thicker of a string, I'm going to have to widen that, that slot. But this brings us to the intonation. So we'll come back, well no, not yet. I have a request for you people. Let me know what kind of strings you're using. I haven't found any I like yet. The strings that originally came on there, I believe are Daddario, that originally came on my Merlin. And then I ordered from Godin, and I got uh, a bunch of their strings, specifically made for the Merlin. I don't like them. They just, they're dead too fast, and they don't have the tone that the, the Dario's had. So what I went and did, is I went and got, I, I ordered a whole bunch online the Dario's again, but I don't think it was the Dario's that was originally on because, again, it's just not there, the sound that was originally there. And probably just building up bigger in my head than it was, and now I think that it was such a great thing and I'll never find it again, but just let me know what you're trying and what they're working for you. I think next I'm going to try ordering some Martin strings and see how those work. So intonation. Oh, we're at 12 minutes already. We'll keep this quick because this is where I be, kind of became an, of an ass last video when I did this. Uh, Merlins and intonation. Do Merlins have intonation problems? Probably. Does it matter to you? No. Is what you're complaining about on your first fret, or not first fret, but on your second string not being in in the right uh, right uh, note when you hit it? That's not the intonation. If your intonation was off, it wouldn't be only the one string that was off. It would be all of them. The way your bridge is set up, this even on an angle, there's a slight angle to them. The reason to angle them is because your gauge, string gauge, actually can throw your intonation off. Not much, but a little bit. And the Merlin is actually, there is a slight angle to it. And now it's just to fight the string gauges. Most acoustics have it. But uh, that being said, even that slight angle, if one string was intonation was wrong, all of them would be. And I'm not saying the intonation is perfect, but on your first, if you're playing on your first fret and it's sounding way off, it's not the intonation, it's the way you're playing. And I know I'm sounding like an asshole again, but it, I had the same problem. I, I've played guitar now for 25 plus years. I came to Merlin, I had a hell of a time. And the, the whole thing is, there's two, two main things that contribute to it, is your fret sizes, the, the heights of them. I don't know what they're, if they're the jumbos or if they're super jumbos, but there's different fret sizes, different heights you can get. And these are bigger than what I usually have on my guitars, like they're higher. So that means you can put more pressure and it can bend the string. Second thing is your string gauge. The looseness. So Sam said he changed his to a, a wound string. It made a difference. And that's what I was going to say about the thicker gauge on I did on the ma ma mahogany. Taking everything up too. It makes a huge difference. There's a lot less slop because honestly it is sloppy. The strings on the Merlin, it is sloppy. And if you've, if you've ever played any other instrument, 
there's good setups and there are bad setups, and you want a little bit of slop, but you don't want too much. But just to give you an idea about it being your string, I'm not going to bend it, I'm not going to do anything, I'm just going to push on it. So that's just a light fret. If you push too hard, and that's just straight down, has no bend to it, if you push too hard, it will go out of tune. So the first thing is don't push too hard, and that will make a big difference. Second thing, especially if you're a beginner, and this is no fault of yours, we all went through this when we were beginners, bleed, oh my god, was I horrible. It takes time, it takes practice. And like I said, I've played guitar for 25 years. I came to Merlin, it took me three months. Do you watch some of my earlier videos? I was doing the same thing, and because I'm so used to on the other instruments, the amount of pressure you have to push. But on the Merlin, it's a lot less. So lighten up your touch. And another problem too is when you're learning chords, your fingers are doing shapes that you're not used to. And they're trying to twist back on you and you're, you might end up bending the string a little bit. So, is the intonation off on a Merlin? Probably. Is it off enough that you're going to hear it? No. I've got on my wall three, three acoustics up there. The one was a sunburst, the dark going into light. It's $200, just a cheap plywood guitar. The middle one, I think I paid around 800 for that one. And then the other one I won't tell you because I don't want to look like an idiot how much I pay for stuff. There's two prices. There's the price you pay and then there's the price you tell your mom. But uh, none of them are probably perfect. I could probably tell you that off right off the bat. It's, it's, unless you had a saddle where you could adjust each string individually, you're never gonna have it perfect. On electric guitar, it's easier because you do have that saddle to be able to move, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Like you will not hear it. If, if, and, I don't know, that's all I really got to say. For a $130 instrument, I wouldn't even worry about it. That's all I got. That's all I got. But anyways, if it does bother you, before you take your instrument in or take it back, put new strings on it. Put new strings on it and instead of using 24, 16, and 12s, which are the string gauges, so you got 24 on the low, 16 on the middle, and 12 on the high, take it up to go 26, and this is, it's not actually 26, it's 0.026 or 0.26, I think it's 0 0.026, could even be 0 0.0026, but it's just, you just call them 26s. Go up to a 26, go up to an 18, and go up to 14s. That little extra tightness in the strings will make a world of difference, especially if you're just starting. And honest, I've got so many sets of strings now, I'm gonna use them up, so I'll, I'll, I'll use the 24s to the 12s for a while. But once those are all gone, I'm gonna, they'll, it's gonna be those gauges, the new gauges is what I'm gonna keep it as. So if you have any inclination problems, try that first. Try changing your strings. And if you still have a problem with that, don't push too, so hard and make sure your shape is right and you're not twisting the string as you're playing it. Now, I probably came across as an ass again, but that's just my opinion and you have the right to disagree. Anyways, that's it. That's all I got for that one. That's longer than I want to read. We're already at 20 minutes, so. Call it day for the 101. I've got two more coming up on a request video, and then I've got a good one I've been working on. I'm excited about, so I'll do those tonight, and uh, we shall see you guys next time.